Carson Beck, get ready. You know, you be, hey, you better have your helmet strapped up tight, baby, because we coming. Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. We are your hosts, Bull and P. And today we're just going to be talking about this big matchup tomorrow. Uh, you know, some of y'all do know that P and I grew up in Georgia. And, you know, obviously as Tennessee fans, and we just grew up hating Georgia. I mean, the fans probably are the worst. Not probably. They are the absolute worst. You know, all that barking and, you know, every year, you know, this is our year. Because you have to keep in mind, like, we grew up in the in the 90s when, you know, Tennessee was beating Georgia every single year. So nine years back to back to back to back. And, um, you know, we just never really worried about them. But they always just had this false sense of confidence in their team. Every running back is the next Herschel Walker. Uh, I mean, we can just go on and on and on and on. Always trying to throw somebody into the Heisman race, people that have absolutely no business being there. They're still doing that to this day. Uh, I mean, they just, they just irk me. But we also knew that living in Georgia, we know how much talent there is here. So we knew that as soon as they got the right coach, that there would be a really, really good football team. And they finally got it with Kirby Smart. So they do have a good team. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel pretty confident. But, P, how you feeling about all this stuff? Yeah, no, yeah, I agree, man. You know, we actually can't stand those guys. And, I mean, you know, living here our whole daggum life, I mean, every Saturday you got to you gotta go to – or, you know, every Monday you got to go to school. And, you know, if the balls happen to lose, you got to hear about it all week. I really, really got to hear about it all year, um, you know, all around town. And, I mean, the worst fan base in the whole world, a uh, bunch of cowards. And, you know, they finally, like I said, finally got them a good coach, uh, you know, that understands the game and has them playing at a high level right now. but. I still feel confident coming into this game. You know, I, I I still feel the same way I felt all season. Still can't wait to see those guys. Um, you know, I just think it's it's gonna come down to us playing good, sound, fundamental football. We don't we don't do anything special. I still don't think this team is, you know, some super team that can't be beat. I, I think, I mean, we've seen them against Auburn, we've seen them against Car uh, South Carolina. You know, we've seen them against Vandy. I mean, these guys, you know, they're 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 a good team, but they definitely can be beat. He's got to take it to them for four quarters, and uh, hopefully, our guys are ready to go out there and do that tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I don't know if the rest of the fan base feels as confident as we do in this game. And it's not necessarily confidence. It's not overconfidence in the fact that we're going to win, but in the fact that we're not going to go get blown out in the Neyland Stadium. I mean, we we just know yeah. that that's not going to happen, right? We're coming off of a terrible game. Uh, you know, I've said this in some in some previous uh, videos, you know, terrible game, probably our worst, and Georgia's bad. So some people are just kind of like jumping off of the bridge and we've been hearing a lot about Tennessee fans selling tickets. I actually took a look at how many tickets there are out there today. Uh, so as of Friday morning, it's only 397 tickets out there. So I don't know how true all of that stuff is. You know, now I, again, I just checked it today. So it could be that there was a whole lot of tickets that was posted earlier and they were sold. If y'all know more about it, let us know down in the comment section. But I think that really what it is, is there are some very vocal people. And usually, you know, the people who are the most miserable are the most vocal, especially on social media. And those people are kind of speaking up. And, uh, you know, it's making our entire fan base look bad. Uh, now, we work, you know, we've got a lot of good visitors coming in this weekend. And Kyle Bates yeah. is a guy, uh, he's, he's a cornerback, and uh, he was committed to LSU. And he's since opened it back up. He was supposed to be visiting Tennessee tomorrow, but now he's going to Florida State, I think. And I don't know why, you know what I mean? I don't know what the reasoning is, but. Could it be because some of these fans are just jumping ship? You know, I, I think that things like that mean a lot more to some of these prospects than, um, you know, teams even losing, you know? I mean, what, yeah. do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's exactly why you hate to see fans that just turn tail and run like that, man, because these kids, is they're on social media. So, so you know, one of our biggest selling points is our is our passionate fan base. And so whenever they see, oh, well, these guys lost, you know, to Mizzou, uh, so they've given up on the season. They don't think they have a chance, you know, like – who wants to go play for that type of fan base? And, right. you know, if, if I could say one thing to those type of fans, you know, keep those types of comments to yourself. Um, you know, don't don't freaking post stuff that's going to make the whole program look bad. Because that's exactly what you do. Whenever you are a quitter, you have no comments on your team, you don't support your team, you know, that's a terrible look. And uh, hopefully, you know, you know, that that's a, you know, you're missing four. Like, hope that's a rumor or something. And maybe it's not accurate. I don't know. I don't know where you where you saw that. Um, what, but, you know, yeah. Oh no, it's 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 out there. I mean, that's that's real. Like he's definitely not coming. I'm speculating as to why he's not coming, but he's not coming. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I, and, I, I, and you know, maybe uh, maybe there's still a chance that he will come to Tennessee, but he's not visiting us. So to me, that's a really big red flag. I mean, it's kind of like getting late in the process. This is our biggest game of the season at home. So you would think that if there's any game that you know prospects want to visit, it would be this. One. So you know, it just it just it just is what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's gone. That's yeah, that's I mean, probably, gone. probably yeah. you know, and that's that's an absolute shame because this team needs more cornerbacks. Like we need better players. So for those fans, and you know, we're not going to harp on this for this whole video, but we have to get this out of the way because I mean, it's extremely frustrating for those fans that are doing that. You're only hurting this program. You're only making it harder for us to get better. You're not helping us get better in any way. And it's not just that, but you know, like whenever you go hard at some of our players, if you don't think that they're playing well and you're just ripping them on social media. Just like P just said, man, do that inside of your own home, like amongst your friends. Don't go to social media doing that, airing out, you know, our dirty laundry, so to speak. You're making us look bad and you're going to cost us players, believe it or not. Those little things make a bigger difference than us winning and losing for the most part. It's not like this team lost every single game this season. I mean, we're still, you know, going to a ball game. You know, we're probably going to win eight, you know, you know, eight, nine games, something like that, you know, may maybe 10. So. I mean, we're still in a good position from that perspective. But whenever y'all do that stupid stuff, getting on social media and bashing us, you are only hurting us moving forward. So had to get that off out the way. I think I've done that in every single video. No, no. I did I did week. I mean, it, just, it, it runs <laughs> off to me, especially this week, man, because we need for the fans to get riled up, man. But I, I do feel like Neil's going to be rocking. I think that most of that is just, you know, again, some people who are being overly vocal and they don't necessarily represent this entire fan base. You know, most yeah, of and, them, and, and, what I and, you know, I was thinking too with that is that, you know, maybe some of those fans that go to the games and don't open their daggum mouths, maybe those are some of the guys that are weeded out. Yeah. And maybe now need need them to be full of guys that actually want to be there and actually want to give their off Tennessee. So could work out in our favor. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, you know, we, we already talked about the uh ticket sales. It's not that many of them uh, you know, going on as of today. So, you know, next thing that you know we had kind of touched on earlier is that you know, this Georgia team that everyone is so terrified of, they are, I mean, they've played very average up against a lot of average to below average teams. I'm going to pull something up for y'all. All right, so we've got Georgia versus UT Martin, all right? That game was 17 to nothing at the half. Georgia was only winning 17 to nothing, all right? And then versus South Carolina, right? South Carolina was up 14 to three on Georgia at the half. And if you go back and watch that game, I mean, dude, South Carolina was was pretty dominant. I mean, they were pretty dominant for about three quarters of that game. UAB, George was only beating them 28 to 14 at the half. Auburn was tied 10 to 10 at the half. If you go back and watch that one, almost leading up to that fourth quarter, Auburn was winning, you know, and they had every single opportunity to win outside of, you know, George's, I want to say, second to last drive. Outside of that, mm -hmm. I mean, they were very dominant. And, they, you know, they make Georgia look average, which is what we've kind of said. I mean, they're not an average team because of their skill sets, but what they're doing, like their schemes and stuff, is not hard to identify what they're doing. So I think we're going to have a whole lot of success there. Vanderbilt uh, was, it was 37 to 20 was the final score, right? So whenever you look at any time that Georgia has traveled on some of these uh, road games, so Auburn was on the road, Vanderbilt was on the road, and, I mean, they don't play great. So they're coming into a much more hostile stadium in Neyland. And, I mean, you have to like your chances with the team that, you know, again, just played their worst game and is trying to prove a point. You know, hearing rumors about their own fans selling tickets and turning their back on them. You've got to believe that some of these guys are going to be out to prove a point. Uh, P, did you, did you get a chance to listen to, I think it was Ali Lane with Austin Price? Did you get a chance mm. to listen to that? Nah, what did he say? Yeah, so, you know, I mean, he's, he, he said a whole bunch of stuff, but one of the things that he kind of commented on was this being his, uh, you know, last home game uh, as a volunteer. And so, you know, he just kind of started to, you know, talk about running through that tee and, you know, talking about Georgia coming to town, you know, the number one team in the entire country. And, you know, he started to kind of tear up. But that's the type of passion that I think that us real fans, us, us true fans all have. Anytime that that tee opens mm -hmm. up, you see them running through that tee, that should bring mm -hmm. a tear to the eye, man. And, you know, yeah. we've got to have a whole lot of pride, and I'm I'm sure that our fans are going to show up and and show yeah. up for this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I sure hope so, man. You know, I sure hope that they that they make this a hostile environment because I mean, that's on paper. That's our one advantage coming into this game is, you know, the environment that we create. You know, we don't lose in Neyland. You know what I mean? So we need the crowd to be full full ready to go. 
But I think, you you know, you make a great point talking about coming off of our worst loss in probably Heupel's career and, it, you know, his whole career. Um, you know, you you think about Elijah Herring, right, you know, as, as kind of the guy that was a lot of people are blaming for that game. I mean, just imagine the week of film that he had, okay, whenever they went and they reviewed the film from last week. I mean, you've got to imagine that coming into this week, a lot of the mistakes that he made, he's not going to be making those because he's been getting drilled on it all freaking week. So he's going to be keen on that stuff. The back out of the backfield, he's going to be getting on it. You know what I mean? These guys are getting blown off the ball. They're going to be freaking holding their gap. Um, you know, we're not going to lose a contain. Nico Slaughter busting uh, cover three coverage. That stuff shouldn't be happening because it just happened last week. And so it's almost kind of a, a blessing in disguise that we had such a bad performance because you got you got to think these guys will be locked in and uh, won't let that same stuff happen again this week. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of – that's pretty much how I'm feeling. You know, obviously, we've got to get that run game going to – you know, I think that that's a place where we do have an edge uh, versus Georgia. If you go yeah. back, you know, again, and if you look at that Auburn game, I mean, shoot, Auburn, pretty much all they do is run that football. I think they only passed the ball maybe 15 or 16 times. Most of that was kind of like on that last drive, but they ran the ball on almost every single play. Georgia knew that, and they just okay. couldn't stop it. You know, I, I'm – I'm I'm hoping that Hypo will kind of implement some of that into his schemes, like a little bit more of that. You know, there's several different options. And uh -huh. basically what it does is it's freezing that defense. You know, I kind of talked about it to, uh, you know, somebody down in the comment section, uh, you know, earlier in this week that, you know, Georgia is a team that plays well within the uh, fundamentals of football. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the uh, Matrix, right? Uh, you know, everyone was scared of those agents because, Inside of a world that's built on rules, those agents were built to dominate in that world. But Neo was special because he could he could see those rules and he could play outside of them. I think that Coach Hypo has got to do a little bit more uh, in his scheme of kind of like utilizing the simple fact that, okay, based off of if we if we line up like this, if we run these routes, then Georgia's defense has to line up like this and they've got to cover this. But what they're not looking for is outside the rules where someone comes backside or something you know, sneaks uh -huh. wide open. That's what we saw a lot of in his passing game last season, but we can implement that into our running game too. You know, I mean, obviously, I think Joe Milton's going to have to have a really big game, uh, you know, running and passing, but I, I would just like to see a little bit more of those wrinkles in this offense. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what I've been saying all week as well. I think, you know, when we play a team like Georgia, they're very, very disciplined, very well coached. And so you almost have to use that to their disadvantage, okay? Mm -hmm. if, if, if linebackers are reading the pulling guards and tackles, you know, when the garden tackle pulls, they're going to go. So right. let's pull the garden tackle, but we're going to run the exact opposite direction. And now they're out of position. You know what I mean? Stuff like that to get these guys kind of, like I said, you know, it's almost robotic how how yeah. sound they play. Like I, I, seen, I seen one play, I think it was, a, I don't remember what it was. I think it was against um, Ole Miss and George D.N. comes up the field. I can't remember exactly what happened, but like the ball went like right by him, like ball right by him. But the DN was just doing his job. His job was to blow up the tight end. And so he didn't even really worry about the ball. He just did his job. You know what I mean? Like, like they're, they're going to do their job almost to a fault. Right. And uh, we got to, we got to take advantage of that. But I, I think this is a game we're going to, we're going to run the ball. I think we're going to need to get close to 200 yards. Um, we're going to really lean, need to lean on that run game. And I think we can run the ball on these guys. I think we should have success. Some we haven't had success um, really against a Kirby smart team really um, since he's been there. But I think that's going to be our, our our key to victory. You know, this is not the same Georgia defense they've had the past couple of seasons. Okay, they don't got a Jalen Carter or Jordan Davis in the middle. Um, you know, they're they're they are good at linebacker. They got some decent guys on the on the edge. Um, pretty much pretty much the same DBs they've had the whole time he's been there. But you know, I I think we can move the line of scrimmage, create some seams, and uh, you know, if going back and watching the film from 2021, we had guys that were open. But just we we couldn't block long enough to give routes time to develop. So I think this season, our old line's been really good in pass protection. It's been really good. And Georgia's D line, the pass rush is not like it's been. So I think we will have time when we do pass it to let some of those routes develop. And if our receivers can can get open, get separation, the has been playing really uh, really well the past few weeks. I think we'll have opportunities down the field as well to to kind of continue to move the chains. But I want to see us really in that run game, not go away from it. And I think we gotta we gotta hand it off thirty plus times um, and almost make this kind of a kind of a defensive type of game. We got I think we gotta keep this low scoring. Um, I think first team to thirty wins this game. So you know, 
you know, it's, it's going to be a defensive kind of kind of smash mouth, uh, you know, line of scrimmage ball game, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, uh, I I think so too. Um, but you know what? I I think that I think that we need to try to score. You know, I I think that I mean, obviously, it's going to start off with that run game. But the more that I'm watching Georgia play, right, and I've I've watched every single game. You know, I've watched every single play of every single game this entire season. Their secondary. I mean, you can you can literally start off running, running, and then you can play action, double move, any of them. Any of them, just mm-hmm. get them isolated and don't move them. And it's either going to be a, uh, you know, if if obviously if the pass is accurate, you know, we're either going to have a big play down the football field with a caught pass or it's going to be pass interference. I mean, they are jumping routes. They're super handsy. They're going to grab you. They're going to hold you. And if you double move them, then it's going to be so obvious that the refs can't not call that. Uh, now, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, refs are going to play a, a pretty big part or, you know, factor in this game because, this is the SEC. And if Georgia loses to us, then the implications is that the SEC might not have anyone make it into the playoff. So, you know, I, that's that's kind of like how it's looking right now. But I, I do think that if we beat Georgia and if Bama beats Georgia in the SEC championship, I think that Bama should get in and they probably will. But whole point mm-hmm. of me saying that is we've got to be very – or, you know, we, I'm, I'm hoping that the referees will call this game relatively quick because they can also be a big swing – in this game if they're not calling obvious pass interference. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, we can start off with that run. I think that we will be able to run the ball successfully on Georgia's defense. Um, and, you know, I think that we'll be able to win deep one-on-one, just like, you know, you was just saying, Pete. And, uh, you know, I think that we'll, we'll be able to score. You know, I, I think that we'll be able to score 30-plus points on this uh, on, on this Georgia defense. I'm, just, I'm not overly impressed with, you know, their, their pass rush is not great. They've got 22 sacks on the season, averaging about 2.2 sacks per game. Uh, I think Tennessee's given up like 1.6 sacks per game. Um, so, you know, we should have a lot of success being able to find that time, throwing the football, and being able to run it on. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's really my, my, my keys to the game for the offense is, you know, run the football and, and stay out of negative plays. You know, we can't have these false starts, the holdings, uh, you know, just the, just the stuff that, because when we get behind the chains, especially against a team like Georgia, um, I mean, you're pretty much, you pretty much, killing yourself right there like you've got to stay you know second five you know third and two you can't get into second and 15 second and 20s i mean i'm not gonna say it's over with at that point but i mean you have a you have a very low shot to to you know to get that first down so just that's why i say you know just run the ball you know continue to stay ahead of the chains get your four or five yards to pop some of those are going to pop um and then you know kind of pick and choose your shots you know almost kind of like i kind of hate to use this example because i don't want us to be like defensive but almost like Floyd Mayweather, you know, you're kind of, you're dodging, you're dodging, you're dodging, you're dodging, and then boom, you know, you kind of pick your shots, boom, 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 give them a nice little combo, you know. That's kind of how I see us having success. But, I mean, like just like you said, I mean, I do think that their DBs, they are very handsy. So we, I mean, if if the refs are calling the flags early, then they're going to have to stop being so handsy and we'll really start to get open in. And like I said, even last year, man, we had guys open, just didn't have time. So, I mean... I think the whole playbook is going to be open. I feel confident in our offense uh, being able to move the ball on these guys, honestly. I really, really do. Um, to me, it's really going to come down to our defense. And I feel confident on that side of the ball as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that that's a little bit of a different beast. And, uh, you know, I had talked about this in my in my film kind of – or I don't think I broke down film there. But I talked about what I saw on film, and um, it's so obvious. And, you know, Pete, we, we've talked about this several times, but it's so obvious what Georgia is going to do. And, you know, for, for those of y'all who didn't see that, you know, I'm going to put that uh, up top for y'all to click on those videos of Tennessee's offense and Tennessee's defense, what we need to do in this game. But, um, you know, w- once you come into a week and you've got all your game prep stuff, right, that tells you all of the tendencies and things like that for a team on offense and defense, I think, um, you know, it's very easy to identify what George is going to do. Their offense is, I mean, you can call their freaking plays from a daggum mile away. It's so obvious. They have so many, like, little, uh, you know, clues and hints as to what's mm-hmm. coming that we should be able to play fast and we should be able to beat their offensive line with some speed. Like you said, man, Herring is going to have to have a really big game, but not just Herring. Aaron Beasley played terrible last week, too. He's got to step up. But usually, when you know, whenever good players come off of bad games, the next one, they usually play lights out. So if they play lights out, uh, you know, if our safeties, if, if our defense can play lights out, if we can get pressure uh, with understanding what play is coming, 
I mean, I think we'll have a lot of success. You know, I think that we'll make this offense look very, very mediocre. Yeah, I mean, definitely, man. You hit now on the head, man. I, I, I think both, you know, the backers have to play. Uh, Beasley, uh, you know, he's a, he's a Georgia boy, for those that didn't know. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like he always gets up for this game. He's going to come out ready to play. And typically, you know, the bigger games, you'll typically see Beasley play his best. Um, and I feel like we, we just didn't respect Missouri last week. For whatever reason, didn't respect him. And so I just don't feel like we really took that game seriously as we should have. But a game like this, I mean, you're going to see us, like, jumping routes. You're going to see us knowing what's coming, getting downhill fast. I mean, that's just typically what we've seen from 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 our team when we play big time uh, big time opponents. We're we're ready to go, and I expect nothing less this week. Um, you know, to me, it's it's going to come down to, like you said, getting pressure. But something that we haven't really talked about. It's always kind of been in the back of my mind, but I never really like say anything about it. Is you know, even like like what like uh, I guess besides Kentucky, pretty much every single game, even when our sack numbers were low, we've mm-hmm. been getting pressure on the quarterback, but we just don't get them down. Like Missouri, yeah. how many times do we get our hands on the guy and he breaks free and goes and gets 20, 30 yards? Mm-hmm. So we cannot get back there and just get our hand on him and think that's okay. We've got to finish when we get to the quarterback. That's that's probably my number one key to the game. Finish when we get to the quarterback. Uh, number two um, is going to be, uh, you know, the backers have got to freaking flow and not and not go get themselves blocked. That's something Beasley did a lot of last week. Just runs into the pile, you know, picks the wrong the wrong angle and this runs to power gets blocked um and then third thing is we've got a tackling space i think i think we can do those three things we can finish up the quarterback not get ourselves blocked and tackle in, in, in space i think we'll have a lot of success um and like you said maybe make this offense look very pedestrian and hold these guys under 20 points i mean i think we could really have that type of game i really do yeah yeah i mean um I, that's that's pretty much it i mean it's just all about playing sound fundamental football you know obviously it's going to be a very physical game you know, linebackers and safeties coming downhill, filling some of these gaps and lanes. I mean, you're going to have to sometimes go head up with an offensive lineman pulling. You know, are you going to try to shy away from that or are you going to blow his butt up? You know, I mean, we're going to have to do things like that. Or, you know, if you can dodge him and make the play, then do that. But don't, you know, Herring, I'm talking to you, don't run past them and get blocked in the back and just wash right out of that play. You, I mean, he's done that so many yeah. times. We're going to anchor down. down. Yeah, yeah, he gets yeah. my nerves. Yeah. Yeah. So if you... But if you but if you go look at us last season, I mean, you know they had they had like three or four plays the whole game. They had the double move to McConkey. Uh, they had a they had a they had a post route to number eleven, which was a great throw. And then they had like two other plays. I think they hit a back out of the back foot on a wheel, something like that. They had like three plays, and those like three or four plays accounted for like one hundred and seventy yards or something like that. Like that was yeah. it. Other than that, we pretty much shut those guys down. So, I mean, we can stop these guys. And I think they were a better uh, offense last year. Darnell Washington and some of those guys, oh. they had better running back. The running back, Kenny McIntosh. Oh, I mean, they were no. Last year. No yeah. doubt. I mean, they had a much better offensive coordinator. I mean, but he's the, he's the OC for the uh, Ravens now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Him, him versus Dagon Bobo, it's it's not even close. But, you know, again, I, I think that Kirby is kind of – Kirby kind of kept that uh, – uh, what's, what's, what's the guy's name? Uh, Monkey. Uh, Monkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Marcus. so he he kind of kept him from I think being as creative as he could have been. So the offense looks a little similar, but it's not this year. It, I mean, you can tell what they're doing even more than you could last year. And uh, you know, I I think the coach Banks just coaches up against these types of offenses, like these kind of like pro style, uh, kind of like straight up and down offenses, way better than he does anything else. There's not a whole lot of wrinkles to their game. So you know, mm-hmm. like you. Like you just said, P, I mean, our, our defense plays well up against these types of offenses. We play well up against Georgia in general on defense. And I think that our defense is a lot better than it was last season. And I think that our um, – I think that Georgia's offense has taken a step back. I don't care what those numbers say. They haven't – we're literally the best defense that Georgia has faced all season. You know, I mean, still to this day, we're still ranked higher than any other defense that they've played against in this entire season. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there's going to be a different test. This, this, this is the first real test. I mean, you know, Mizzou is a test for them. Um, I was hoping Ole Miss would give them something, but we talked about that before the game. You know, we didn't really like Ole Miss either. Um, this well, will be their well, first. Yeah, but, well, so, so, so look, you know, Ole Miss had, like, a bunch of key injuries, and that's when they started losing. That was down oh, to, like, their, yeah, they, they lost three tackles in that game. That was down to, like, their third or wow. fourth three tackle. Yeah, so they were literally having to change up their entire game plan they, they couldn't run it anymore after that. But if you look before that, they were running all over Georgia. I mean, running all over, running it straight at them, beating them to the outside with uh, speed. 
But then, you know, once those tackles uh, went down, they could no longer run it. And then they had to get the ball out of their hands really, really quickly. And Georgia started to see on that. And the offense just couldn't move. But see, that's something else that people overlook. You know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, yeah. you know, this blew this team out, but not realizing that, you know, they lost so many key players in that game. And that's why Georgia was able to kind of open it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying, man. These guys, I mean, I still think they're frauds. You know, I think they're still a fraudulent program. Um, and, you know, hey, we're going to see who they are tomorrow. We're going to see because I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something, okay? Tennessee Volunteers, when we when, when we play those guys, okay, mm-hmm. hey, let me tell you, there ain't no backing down. I was watching that Gagum game uh, yesterday uh, mm-hmm. from last season. I mean, you want to talk about every play. Clack, clack, yeah. clack. I mean, just clap. I mean, the line of scrimmage is coming down. Boom. I mean, yeah. we were the more physical team last. I mean, go back and watch mm-hmm. the film, okay? We take it to those guys every year. Even the year before, I think they were blowing us out. Um, and still, go watch that all through the whole fourth quarter. You're going to see Jeremy Banks freaking coming down hill, clapping people, talking, oh, yeah. I mean, chirping. Like, we, we're going to be the first team. And, and I'll give Mizzou credit. Mizzou gave it, you know, they took it to them too. But we're going to probably be the first team that can kind of match them almost a little bit talent-wise mm-hmm. that ain't going back down and that's going to really take it to them. And it's yep. going to be in our, in our place. So, hey, yep. let me tell you, Carson Beck, get ready. You know, you be, hey, you better have your helmet strapped up tight, baby, because we coming. I'm trying to tell coming. you. I mean, look, every single one of them, and there's nobody on that team that scares me in any type of way. You know, I talked about uh, talked about Bauer. You know, everyone's so scared of him. What people don't understand about him uh, is that I think 80, 80% of his yards are, are after the catch. That's not because he's, you know, some, uh, you know, some great, uh, you know, sportsman or something like that. He's getting the ball right close to the line of scrimmage with two or three people blocking for him, and that's why his numbers look so crazy. But if you see him anytime in a one-on-one situation, nine times out of ten, he's not coming down with those catches, especially up against SEC or Power 5 players. That's just not happening. Yeah. He's not beating you with uh, speed. You know, he's not super big. I mean, is he is he 6'4", 230, or is he 240? You know, people keep going back and forth on that. To me, he looks more like, you know, probably he's close to like 230. He's not a very big guy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and what we, we held him last year to what? Three yards for uh, th- uh, three catches for like 37 yards? Or yeah. Or, or, yeah. I, I thought it was like 24, like three catches for like something 24. Like that. Yeah. 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 He ended up not. I mean, yeah. So, because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to, yeah. yeah it's, it's easy to shut down how they use them, uh, you know, as long as you come up and play good, sound, fundamental football. If you do that, he can't mm-hmm. get open. So, yeah, this is going to be a, a, a really big game for our backers. Man, how 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 big would it be if Keenan Pilly just trots out there? I, know. <laughs> I mean, oh, my man, goodness, man. They uh, freaking trot him out there like Michael Jordan. You know, Michael Jordan, he goes out there, and they're playing that music, you know what I mean? He comes out there with his helmet off. Mm. I mean, I would, I, would, I would freaking love that, man. But, uh, I mean, heck, maybe they'll do it. I mean, if, if, if he plays, you, you can go and forget about it. That's game. Yeah. Yeah. They want oh, yeah. four points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that would pretty much be all the – that's pretty much all that we would need. I mean, even if he can't give us a whole lot of plays or reps, just those reps that he is in for. And, I mean, you know, some of the other guys that's going to be coming off of that bench, I would much rather have a banged up, uh, you know, Keenan Pilly than those guys, just to be completely totally honest with you. But um, so, P, yeah. I guess we've kind of gone through everything. You know, I didn't want to make this one too long. Just a little, you know, warm up for our tailgate show tomorrow. but. I do. Do do you want to go ahead and do picks, or do you want to save that for tomorrow? Um, it's, it's up to you. I mean, we can probably save it for tomorrow. I mean, that's, that's yeah, how yeah, we always yeah. do it. So. Yeah, we'll yeah. do a game day. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna catch y'all uh, tomorrow morning. You know, at the usual time. So please keep a close eye out for that. Appreciate y'all so much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll catch y'all on the next one. Thanks. Peace.